This is Personal Injury Court. This is Wilson versus Atkins. Ms. Wilson, it's my understanding that you are suing Mr. Atkins for hitting your foot with a forklift and tearing part of it off. You are asking this court to award you $250,000 for past medical expenses, $150,000 for future medical expenses, $2 million for scarring and disfigurement, and $2.7 million for pain and suffering for a total award of $5.1 million. That's what you want, right? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Atkins, it's your position she shouldn't have been there, and if she had been responsible, this would have never happened. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Ms. Wilson, why'd you file this lawsuit? I started working. I went into shipping, a warehouse shipping, and six months ago, I was promoted as supervisor in a male dominant area. Women are changing the world, getting we into are, the guys' stuff. We are. We are. <laughs> You're enjoying it? I love it. So, uh, Mr. Atkins, tell me about your job. What do uh, you do? I'm a truck driver. Truck driver been in the family for the longest of times. You know, my grandpappy did it, my dad did it, and now I'm doing it. Two of my brothers are truck drivers. Oh, that's great. You deliver things, I take it? Yes. What we, kinds uh, of things do you deliver? We deliver whatever a client may need. We do, we work for about 50 companies. Okay. Uh, we transport to over 100 locations. So, Ms. Wilson, what went wrong here? I am looking over my inventory, making sure everything is correct. No one is in the warehouse but me. Why would that be? Is it a break or something? Yes. All my employees are going on break. Okay. That's when I know there's no machinery on. It's no reason for any nothing to be going wrong at this point because I'm the only one there. Your Honor... First, I'd like to say, why would you have all your employees at lunch at the same time? Okay. It's a time schedule. How so, Ms. Wilson, and I, and I because of your personal that agenda. Simply because like, why are you doing that? I'm Look how much time that you're wasting safety. by doing this. Mr. Atkins, talk to me. So, Ms. Wilson, tell me what happened. As I'm in the warehouse and I'm going through my stuff and I'm stepping back, and as I'm going back, I get this, this sharp pain into my left heel where he is on my forklift and slants into my left heel. Oh. I'm down. I'm on the ground. Did you know you had struck her, her leg or her foot? I felt a little bump, and I seen it in there, and as soon as I seen it, I caught and Is got she down her. on the uh, She's concrete? She's down on the ground, yeah. You remember this, obviously, Ms. Wilson. Yes, I was down. I was screaming. I was in pain. I've never in my life felt this type of pain before, ever. So there's no one really around but you and Mr. Atkins Correct. at this point. So then what do you do? I blacked out. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. Mr. Atkins, do you remember this, this incident? Yes, Your Honor. Tell I... me how this happened from your perspective. So this is a company that I've been working with for four years now. Okay. So, so basically what you do, you pick up a load... Yes. Sir. ...and then you deliver it to the warehouse. Yes. Right? When you get to the warehouse, is there a certain routine that you go through to the... deliver your load? It's always you get there drop your load off to somebody, they take care of it, but sometimes they can't take care of it. So because I'm certified and driving a forklift, they, they gave me the okay to go ahead and do it. So, Ms. Wilson, on this day when Mr. Atkins brought his load, what was he supposed to do? Um, Your Honor, he's supposed to wait on staff. He's supposed to wait on them because they are the ones that help unload the truck. And when he gets out of his truck, he's supposed to sign his name, time, and date, and that's when I would come and I would signature off showing that he did come and make the drive. And then once he completes the paperwork, your staff grabs the forklift and unloads the truck with your forklift. Yes, sir. Mr. Atkins, you actually went in and got the forklift yourself. Yes, I did. The manager, previous manager, told me that I had the authorization to do that. So to be clear, you knew about the policy. Yes, I did. Folks told you you could do it another way. That's why he got fired, the other supervisor because of the situation of him coming in and doing what he wanted to do. It didn't work that way. So how's he supposed to know that we're doing it differently? This has been a rule that's been going on before I even became supervisor. But, it, but he said for years he's been allowed to do this. Why that's wouldn't correct. he just do it the same way? No, sir. Not on my watch. Because safety is my protocol and that's what I'm going by. If they can't get with it, then... then... And, and so what happened to your foot? I have a hole in my foot this big, in my heel. They had to take muscle out of my left thigh to place inside of my heel to try to give me somewhat of a balance. Yes, ma'am. But it would never be the same because I'll forever have, like, a limp. I would have hip problems. I mean, 
And my whole life is completely shattered. I can never wear heels again. That's I've right. done all kind of stuff. I used to travel. I have children. Yes, ma'am. You can still you know, travel. And I, I have all these... I have responsibilities. My husband is sick. I'm the breadwinner in my family. Yes, ma'am. You know, and well, so... Well, to further understand your injuries, I want to call Dr. Darren Newfield to explain this injury from a medical perspective. <laughs> Sheriff, if you'll get Dr. Newfield. Yes, Your Honor. Doctor, for the record, state your name. Dr. Darren Newfield. And what kind of doctor are you? I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Doctor, tell us the nature and severity of Ms. Wilson's injury. Well, she sustained an injury to her calcaneus, which is the heel bone. This image shows her calcaneus and the multiple bones that were fractured. So this forklift basically took her heel off. Yeah, we call it a crush injury because it's not just an injury to the bones. There's also a significant injury to the soft tissues around the heel. The muscles, the tendons, the nerves, the arteries can be involved. And so with a crush injury, our biggest worry in the beginning is for infection. Okay. And so we have to take the person to surgery multiple times usually to wash out the heel, remove any debris from the forklift or from her shoes. And then, then she's left with a big soft tissue defect. Is, is it accurate to call this a life-changing injury? Oh, well, this, yeah, this is a life-altering injury, definitely. Sometimes if the injury is severe, we do a below-knee amputation if you can't salvage the foot. The physician who did her surgery yes, sir. actually was able to salvage the foot. In order to fill in this soft tissue defect, they took skin and soft tissue and muscle from her thigh to cover the heel soft tissue defect. Miss Wilson, how are you able to get around now? It's, I'm sorry, I get very emotional because this is like a super life-changing moment. Yes, ma'am. I see that you brought a scooter. Yes, is, sir. is that something you have to use every day? I do, constantly. C can you show me how this uh, scooter helps you get around? Um, with it, I have to put my left leg into it and I have to move, move carefully around and I have to go like this. I mean, and it takes time, especially if you have to go to the restroom. So, so moving around your house, you have to use this scooter? Yes. I don't go to the stores because to me it's embarrassing. I don't want to be out like this. So, Ms. Wilson, the back of your heel was basically torn off. Correct. Now, I see you've got that boot on. Have you tried to wear shoes? I can't, and the reason why I can't is because of the heel. It's not healed completely, in which it'll probably never will be. Doctor, what, what's the future like for Ms. Wilson with this kind of injury? Well, it, it takes six months to a year f to just heal from the injury. The first six months, usually, you can't put your foot on the ground. There's no weight bearing. And in the second six months, that's when you do a lot of rehab and therapy just to try to regain as much function as possible. So is this scooter a lifetime apparatus for her? It may or may not be, depending on how much she can recover. She clearly has long-term deficits with her foot and ankle. It'll never be the same. She'll never be able to wear normal shoes. Will she be able to walk naturally? Maybe she could just wear flats or something like that. But... Oh! Yes. So don't be so insensitive about this. Uh, Your Honor, I, I'm This not... is an injury that you caused. Look at that. You cannot be callous about that. Our society puts a lot of pressure on women to be beautiful and perfect. You clearly can't be perfect. You still are a beautiful woman, but this has got a way on your mind. Tell me about that. It's, it's very emotional. And actually, I do some therapy sections because it has messed with me emotionally. I see here in, in that you're seeking $2 million for permanent scarring and disfigurement. Your, your foot is disfigured, isn't it? Yes, sir. I see also that you're asking this court to award you $2.7 million for pain and suffering. I imagine this never leaves your mind. It doesn't. This, is, this has re really been a life change experience for me. I also see that you have $150,000 for future medical expenses. Yes. Sir. Doctor, is that reasonable? Is that what she's looking at? I, it's, it's a reasonable amount, I would assume. She could have multiple more surgeries on this foot and ankle if it, she can save it. Sometimes we save it in the beginning, in the first couple of years, and then the patient ultimately goes on to a below-knee amputation. So she may be facing an amputation. She still could lose this. Foot. If they're professionals, they should be able to save it. 
So you're a doctor well, now. Well, I, I'm not a doctor, but I so feel you like should, if you, wow. if you Mr. Atkins, that title, Mr. Atkins, wow. I'm not going to talk over you. Wow. You are not a doctor, and you have not gone to medical school. But let me take you to law school. <laughs> when you are operating a forklift, you must do so responsibly, I... not because you did it irresponsibly 1,500 times before. Every time you must take care. I see from your passion that you believe you did, but stay in your lane. Doctor, you may be released. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Atkins, you've seen the diagrams, you've yes. heard the testimony, yes, you've Honor. heard the doctor. Yes, Your Honor. You still just say, look, this is not my fault. See, again, Your Honor, I don't say that this isn't my fault. In the terms of me doing my job, I feel like I did what I did, right? I did everything I needed to do. I feel like she was in the wrong place at the wrong time when the accident occurred. Tell me why you think that she was in the wrong place. The reason I feel like she's in the wrong place because, you know, she talks about how she... She cleared it out. No one should be in there. If you work in a factory, this is a known fact from any company anywhere that you should not be close to that danger zone at any time because you never know when someone will be operating a vehicle. Now, at you all. say a danger zone. You can go to the monitor. You can tell me why you say that's a danger zone. If you look right here, this is the danger zone. And as you can see, she walked backwards. If you're at a factory job, why would you walk backward? There's danger at any moment of time, no matter who you are, whether you're a supervisor who tells all your employees to leave or whether that everyone was self-aware. You have to be on your toes, male or woman. It doesn't matter. Your instinct has to be intact whenever you are in a factory. Miss Wilson, is that a danger zone where you should have stayed out? It is a danger zone, but I normally always keep the area clear. But no it matter what, no matter if it's clear or not, it is always told to take precaution and always look where you're going when you're walking. That's common sense, y'all. You may return to the podium. Thank you. Ms. Wilson, do you admit that this was a pathway that is usually kept clear for safety reasons? Yes, Your Honor, I can. I mean, forklifts aren't really like tricycles. They make noise. They've got beepers. You can hear them. Why wouldn't you hear this forklift? On that day, because it's so loud in the warehouse, and I actually have... And to point out, my Your safety Honor, headphones. I, I was just talking to her. It's okay. I, I will get to you. I promise. I have my safety headphones, in which we have these. So you had but... those on this day? Yes, sir, I did. Are those noise canceling? Why do you have those on? Because of the noise in the warehouse. Sheriff Matt, will you retrieve those uh, headphones from Miss Wilson? I want to see them. Now, I'm going to put these on, Matt, and I want you to talk to me as loud as you see fit so I can see what this noise canceling is about. Now, when I point to you, Matt, I want you to talk to me. That green's a great color on you, Judge. <laughs> Say something again a little louder. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I see how this would muffle your sound. With these on, you prevent you an opportunity to hear him. I would expect no one to be there. And again, if someone had come to the dock and whatnot, and they did what they're supposed to do by ringing the bell, it would alert me. Nobody had done that. But if you cleared it, then you shouldn't even have to worry about it being super loud because it was cleared. Everyone was on lunch. I think I've heard what I need to hear, folks. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Ms. Wilson, have to prove that Mr. Atkins was wrong and that his wrong caused your injuries. You've had your heel torn off. You didn't know this was going to happen. When you figured it out, you were already in the heart of tragedy. Unfortunately, the law doesn't just look at your injury. It looks at everything. It looks at whether Mr. Atkins was wrong. Now, Mr. Atkins, you didn't expect she'd be in the safety zone. No, Your you Honor. You certainly didn't expect she'd be walking backwards with headphones on. No, Your Honor. But her actions don't absolve you of the responsibility to be safe. Now, part of being safe is to abide by the rules, and the rules require that you get some of her folks, I'm speaking right now, that you get some of her folks to help with this forklift, and this may not have happened. Here, I find, Ms. Wilson, that you proved that Mr. Atkins was wrong. He should have waited because it would have been safer. Because he was wrong, this injury is his fault. 
and I find that you are entitled to $250,000 for past medical expenses, $150,000 for future medical expenses, every penny of $2 million for permanent scarring and disfigurement, and I'm giving you $2.7 million for your pain and suffering for a total award of $5.1 million. It's my family business, and this... Oh, my... That is my final award, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Chad Dudley has to say. Now, that injury was gruesome. In this case, Miss Wilson's injuries were caused by someone other than a coworker. Some people don't realize that if you're hurt at work and your injury was caused by a person other than your employer or a coworker, you may have a right to sue them for personal injuries in addition to pursuing a worker's compensation claim. 